Welcome back to the show, everyone. Uh, I'm a big fan of our next guest. Uh, he's writing all kinds of great stuff. Ian Walker, Vancouver Sun sports writer and fashion plate as well. How are you? Well, good. I'm doing well. No, you're wearing that for, for two reasons. First of all, your wife told you to, so that's always a good policy. But second, this is sort of, uh, this is for Fee a little bit as well. Well, of course. I heard she wasn't going to be here. She's going to be in New York with Fashion Week. And I was thought, hey, let's see. <laughs> And my wife, who dresses me, that's said, a, that's a, <laughs> see, that's a smart man right there. You don't resist that, because women do have better taste in general, so don't fight it. You don't wake up looking this good. you got to have help, and, <laughs> and God knows I got it with my wife. Oh, so. man. Okay, let's talk about some, uh, some hockey, and I've never seen anything. I, I showed the footage of it. Everyone's probably seen it by now if they didn't see the game last night of Dan Hamhuis getting hit from behind by Getzlaff, but I don't. I don't remember many times, and the Canucks have always had this problem on, on D, but I've never seen it like this before. Just guy after guy going down. Well, I mean, if there's a good thing, it's now, and it's not in April. Yeah. Um, if there's a good thing, Sammy Salo's coming back. Yeah. If there's a good thing, it's that uh, Chris Teneve is playing so well. Yeah. Um, is that yeah. how the guys have to approach it, too? I mean, you really have to, I guess when you're at that level, you have to look for the Yeah, the, you can't be good. thinking you're next, because <laughs> then you're next. You know, you know what I mean? And uh, I think it's, you know, it's that adversity and those cliches that they talk about, and they're going through it, yeah. and they're doing well. And the other good thing, too, is, I mean, we've got to remember, they've built up a 19-point lead, yeah. lead or on other teams in the league and on their division. And, you know, they could play 500 hockey yeah. and still beat their record for points. Well, so one of the interesting things that I've been seeing this year, and we were ta I was talking about it with our floor director uh, on one of the breaks, is except for maybe the Chicago game, I haven't seen many teams actually beat them this year. I've seen them lose games where they kind of messed up. You know, the Canucks yeah. kind of blew it. But I haven't seen many teams run them out of the rink. No, and, you know, to, you know, last night was a prime example. You know, They beat themselves. Yeah, you know, you're down one nothing 50 seconds into the game. And, yeah. you know, you're down 3 nothing at one point. And, you know, they came back. And, you know, that shows a lot what they did coming back from a 3 nothing deficit to make it a game. Yeah. Um, but you're going to have games like that, you know. And, and, again, by no means defending their play, but the, the fact of the matter happen. is, they, that's their first loss, regulation loss at home <laughs> since December 5th. That's, that's crazy. two months. Yeah, you know, that's like, crazy. okay, this yeah. is the Vancouver Canucks. Everyone. This team may spoil it for yeah. the rest of Canuck fandom yeah. history forevermore. Okay, let's talk about some of your writing lately. Uh, one of my favorites, I think, uh, Ray Emery. Uh, yeah. I've always liked this guy. I mean, he brings some flavor to the rink yes. that I, I think a lot of players never did. But he's had some amazing adversity to overcome in the last year. Tell us about this story and what's going on. Well, you know, I. I, I, I'm a fan of these guys too. You know, the guys that are sort of pegged with a certain certain label. Yeah, yeah, you know, and stereotype. And gosh knows, I've made my fair share of mistakes, and, yeah. and I'm lucky to be here where I am today. <laughs> yeah. So if I can give a guy that I've never met a chance, and if he's up straight up with me, I mean, that's the way I take it. You know, that's yeah. how I like to view people. And I heard about them, him making a comeback, and uh, the thing that interested me the most was it's the same injury that Bo Jackson suffered. Okay, first of all, I had no, I remember Bo Jackson having this issue with his hip, but I didn't remember it enough that when I read Ray Emery and what had happened, his, the ball of his hip was basically dead, right? Yeah, it, with the blood flow had stopped going to the hip and the bone deteriorated to its core. And Bo, back 15 years ago when it happened, had to have um, you know, numerous hip replacement surgeries. So Ian Walker being Ian Walker says, well, I want to find out how Bo, how Bo, Bo knows. does Bo know? Let's yeah. find out about this. So you tried to track him down. What that, happened? Well, I went through Nike, and he's got commercials out with them. Boom. And uh, they, they, they just more or less said, listen, Bo doesn't do media. You know? <laughs> Bo <laughs> does not do media. And uh, so I was like, well, I'm not going to settle for that. So I did some research, and he has his own facility in uh, Lockport, Illinois. Yeah. So I called up a the facility. They weren't really much of a help. And then I found a marketing manager. And I sent him an email. And I just said, listen, there's this young black goalie who's coming back from the same disease. He'd be the second guy ever to come back from, well, it's not a disease. I correct myself. It's a condition. Yeah. Uh, come back from this condition. The story writes itself, Bo knows, yeah. you know? And <laughs> I, he sent me an email back saying, all right, let me see what I can do, you know? Yeah. And nothing, then I nothing, called him nothing. up, and I was like, hey, yeah, what's the deal with that? And he ends up telling me that he's good friends with Andrew Albers' sister. I'm like, hey, <laughs> hey, 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 I'll say hi to Andrew for you tomorrow. Yeah. And uh, so we talked talk, talking. I think he understood where I was coming from this, and I just wanted Bo for a couple of minutes to talk about what it takes to come back from this and really give it some context. And uh, it was a Thursday, and I got a call, and it was a block number, 
And it's See, usually I my would, wife. I would never answer that. Well, it's usually yeah. my wife, but she was in the kitchen. Yeah. So I was like, I took the call, and it's like, is this Ian Walker? I'm like, it is. Mr. Jackson. I was like, Bo Jackson? <laughs> he's like, that's why he said. is, I, I mean, I don't want to use the word reclusive, but he really doesn't, no, he he's, doesn't he's, do a lot he's of No, he's sort of dropped stuff. off the face, you know what I mean? Yeah. And he does signings and things like that, but you have to pay $25,000 for him to come out. And he had some really cool things. I mean, when I was reading the article, he had some really uh, positive things to say about the kind of person that it takes to Very persevere person. in this kind of, uh, of I mean, the things that they had to, the pain that he had to endure before the injury and after the injury. He was in a bed, a hospital bed in his parents' home for five weeks. Two weeks of those, he was just laid up in bed. Yeah, this you is know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, couldn't use the washroom, didn't, he just was in a bed. And then for three weeks after that, he could get up enough to get to the washroom, limp to the washroom. And then he spent two months at his cottage uh, outside Toronto, uh, and he more or less said, I'm just looking at a lake and reflecting on my career. And geez, <laughs> so I was- a lot to reflect on, yeah, right? Geez, yeah, geez, I was, you know, because he's had problems with teammates and, yeah. and a playboy lifestyle and all this stuff. Police. And yeah, police. you know, and <laughs> car accidents. And uh, he, he ended up realizing, I want to do this. And, and he said for the longest time, he tried to run from being a hockey player. Yeah. And then he read a quote, quote that said, embrace what you're good at. And he goes, yeah, why, why don't I just, I'm good why at something. Why am I fighting this? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. And so they went back and he started training with this renowned trainer, um, Matt Nickel, who used to train the Leafs. And uh, they had to do all these little tiny movements to, to strengthen the core. Yeah. You know what Pilates, I mean? Pilates, a little bit of ballet, ballet yeah. like everything. You know, all these must to take the, the pressure off the joint. And like I said, Bo had the hip replacement surgery. They did this surgery with, with Ray. They took 13 centimeters out of his femur, a non-weight bearing bone, oh. and then they attached it, or sorry, yeah, his fibula, and attached it to his femur so they get the blood flowing again. Oh. And you know, so yeah, so they had to do all these things. And, it just and, makes my thigh ache, man, you know, thinking about it, it's terrible. Yeah, it's, it's, it's one of those things where you just don't yeah. understand unless you're there. Well, yeah, and you have to love what you're, you're trying doing. to do. There's no way that you're gonna come back. Well, it's not about the money. Dedicated. The guy's making $105,000 in the yeah. AHL, five hundred thousand dollars if he manages to come back, which I think he will. Yeah. In the NHL, but I mean, the guy's made thirty million over his career. Yeah. You know, so it's not about the money. It's about okay, I've got a chance to redo some things that I did wrong yeah. and maybe be a positive influence in someone's life. It's going to be fascinating to watch. Now yeah. we spent so much time on that, but I want to uh, quickly. No, no, it's good. It's a great story. Uh, I love these guys, and you actually pointed me to them. The uh, the Hockey Gods yeah. website, and these guys are are. I mean. In a crowded market, lots of hockey blogs out there. These yeah. guys are really standing out. They've They're really separated some funny themselves. Stuff. And I found them uh, through another hockey blog called Puck Daddy. And I, something connected, and I saw that like, it seemed to be, you know, they were doing these things. And, and I went to look at it, and the thing that caught me was jerseys provided, they were, were jerseys, and jerseys provided by Van City Sports. I was like, these guys aren't local. Yeah, no and way. then next thing you know, I find a few calls, and they are. Yeah. And they were filming, and they said, hey, yeah, come to one of our parody shoots. They do ads. They do, uh, what the is urban it, hockey goalie, table? Yeah, coach's table coach's with Don table. Barry, which is just <laughs> hilarious. The Don Barry, you have <laughs> to go Don and uh, online to these guys, hockeygods.com, and check this out. I mean, it is, it is absolutely perfect. And there's a lot of people that do imitations of Don Cherry, Yeah, right? and, and you know, the funny thing is I tried to call Don Cherry to get his take on it. It. But Don doesn't have a cell phone, and I don't even think he knows what the internet is. <laughs> so uh, I didn't get a call back. To get a hold yeah, of he, he's tough to get a hold of them both. Oh man, I love it, man. Thank you so much for joining hey, us, as great. always. Uh, if you haven't caught up with his writing, you can, of course, online as well, and look for him in uh, the pages of the Vancouver Sun. And you can follow him on Twitter, Walker Big Talker. Thanks so much, man. Hey, always I a pleasure. appreciate it. Appreciate it very much. We're going to take is a it break. Like this or is it like we'll be, this? Oh, no, I like there. That's, That's better. That? That's Forbes going to like that. When we come.